Maybelline cover girl for certain And my body on point, they be like, who's just searching? Turns out, I'm never in a drought And from what these niggas say, I look Hey street team, welcome back to Denny TV where we bring what's going on in these streets to your TV, okay? So today what's going on in these streets is moving out of state. Um, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dan Hill, so make sure that y'all like, comment, and subscribe. If y'all didn't know, um, I currently live in St. Louis, Missouri, and your girl is moving to Savannah, Georgia. I officially accepted my first position in TV news. It's literally like a dream come true. So if y'all want to hear about that, go look in my video all about that um but today i wrote down like nine tips and things that i've learned by going through this moving out of state process so i wanted to share them with y'all so like let's just get into tip number one if y'all see me looking down i'm looking at my phone because i wrote down a whole bunch of stuff and i have a whole bunch of notes so number one is going to be make sure that you have money for everything that may come up like you want to make sure that you have first month's rent that's just at the top of the list very very important and if you want to like move and make sure that your place is like fully furnished and you have like a little safety net i would say that you need at the minimum ten thousand dollars and then go up because i'm moving right now and baby i'm already at five thousand dollars and i ain't even stepped foot into my apartment yet and i'm still buying stuff so it's literally creeping up to the tens if you don't have a job when you're moving but you have like an offer letter and know your salary and when you will start you can actually submit that to your apartments and they will accept that as a form of income um if you have a checking or a savings account that has three to six times your rent depending on the apartment they'll accept that if you have like a 401k um if you have like a trust fund whatever the case may be like some kind of income showing that you can afford to pay your rent apartments will accept that on the application if you don't have a job just yet number three on the list is going to be making sure that you have some type of credit established um make sure that you're able to pass a background check and make sure that you do not have anything in collections or any evictions because that is what apartments look for i know when i was applying they were like okay have you ever been evicted do you have anything in collections um is your credit score between this range they don't mostly go off of oh my god you have to have the best credit score they pretty much go off of a range and if you can pass the background check you know if you have the collections or evictions so if your credit is not that great you still got hope girl or boy write down a list of all of your bills whether it's like car insurance or car note um credit card bills groceries whatever the case may be and then write down the rent of the apartment that you're thinking about moving in and add it all up and know your finances and expenses for the month because oftentimes we jump to be like oh i'm gonna live here because it's nice like no get what you can afford and go from there because you can always make a place your own i know when i was searching i seen an apartment that was literally like my dream apartment could i afford it no so i was like sis you need to pipe down and get the apartment you know that you can afford which don't get me wrong baby my apartment is nice but if i could get the other apartment i would have but just you know think about making something your own and think about getting what you can afford because just from learning from like my family and friends and stuff like that when you get out there and them bills are rolling those bills are rolling so you can't tell your rent oh, i'm gonna pay you tomorrow like you know you have to pay these things so get what you can afford and go from there and sometimes you have to make that sacrifice like it may not be lit right now but you're gonna be lit later when you get your big paying job so those are just some things to think about um when you are looking for an apartment instead of budget the most important part is going to be finding an apartment so narrow down the area that you want to live in in your city um make a list of 10 apartments I say 10 because once you get to calling them and finding out requirements and amenities and things like that, you're going to slowly, and you see them, you're going to slowly start crossing off. I don't want to live here because of this and that, crossing them off the list. So by the time you do all of that, you'll be left with three apartments and then you just go from there. Um, 
when you're calling these apartments you want to know the amenities amenities was very important to me when picking an apartment like i need to see what y'all have to offer outside of what i'm living i'm moving alone so i wanted to know if my apartment you know had events where i can meet people that live in my building you know to network do you have a food truck pulling up because baby i love food and i need that pulling up in my apartment like that was things that i was looking for you want to see um, how much you have to make times the rent. Most of the times it's three times the rent. If they tell you something crazy, go ahead and go somewhere else because they probably trying to like say that they don't want you to live there low key because of your color or your voice or whatever the case might be. Because during this process that actually happened to me, but it was cool because the apartment that I ended up getting was literally a thousand times better. Like way updated, your loss, okay? But, um, you want to ask them the application fee, security deposit, do you have to pay first and second month's rent? Um, if you're taking a pet, the pet deposit fee, pet rent, are the utilities included? How much are the utilities? I know with a lot of apartments now, they do require you to pay um, like your utilities through them. So like with my apartment, I have valet trash and i have to pay the water bill through them they send it to me and like basically everything else comes through them so check things like that like do they have a bundle where you pay like your cable bill through them like check those type of things um let me see hold on y'all because i feel like i'm missing something off my list oh yeah this was something important too um so during a pandemic it's super hard to find an apartment because every day the rate is changing and i don't think they're evicting people right now so people are not moving out so it's like 10 times crucial so if you know now like hey i want to move to houston and i want to move there in april i would say start looking for an apartment now and go get on the move right now because i started looking now in january and a lot of the apartments that i was looking at was not available until March or April. So like that'll cross apartments off your list as well. Next, we're going to get into the furniture. I would say pick your apartment before you decide if you're gonna keep your furniture or buy new furniture because sometimes with the layout, like the stuff that you already have or the stuff that you're planning on buying may not fit the layout. So pick your apartment first and then decide if you're going to keep the furniture or if you're going to buy all new furniture. Honestly, it pretty much equals out the same because if you drive a U-Haul, like right now during the pandemic, U-Hauls are starting off at $1,600. That's for you to drive it and you to put everything together yourself. But if you look into movers, movers start off anywhere between $1,800 and they can go up to $12,000. So personally, what I did, I um, got movers because I feel like that's better because first of all, I don't have to be in the car for 11 hours and then get there and put everything together. They're gonna go pick up all of my stuff, drop it off, and then they're gonna put everything together for me. And it's like, if I'm gonna spend the money, I'm gonna make it work my wow, you know, where I have to do the least amount of work as possible. Honestly, it's really just a preference. So whatever your preference is, I would say just go for it. But you're looking to spend within, you know, moving 1800 to 12K or with the U-Haul 1600. And then if you put your car on the back of the U-Haul, that's an additional fee as well. Figure out if you're going to drive or get your car shipped. Sometimes, like, if you're not moving that far, it's better to just go on here and drive the car because it's not a lot of miles that will be put on the car. But if you're moving somewhere far like me, like, nah, we gonna ship that car because what I'm not gonna do is put 800 miles on my car. Um, you don't know what you're going to encounter when driving the car. The maintenance on the car, you'll need an oil change before you, you leave. You'll need new tires and things like that. And in my case, it's just better to ship the car. Um, shipping the car can be as low as $400 and go up to $12,000. So you'll need money for that and, you know, to research all of that and make sure the company that you are going to is going to really bring you your car. Um, is the moving company or the car shipment company insured? What is the insurance amount that they're giving you if they lose your stuff or your stuff is damaged? You know, like these are things to think about personally. Cutting corners is not a good thing um, because when you're trying to cut corners, you're going to end up spending more money. 
So you might as well just spend the money and make sure everything is verified and right rather than cutting corners because in the end, you go and you pay somebody $500 to move your stuff and then what happens if you don't get your stuff or they bring your stuff and it's damaged, then you're going to end up having to spend, you know, $1,000 to get quality furniture. So, I don't know. It all just really depends on preference, but I would say weigh the pros and the cons. Research the area that you're living in. So, say you're looking on Google Maps and you see the apartment, zoom in and look at what stores and what things are around your apartments. Like we never see a Whole Foods in the hood or somewhere that's unsafe. So it's a, if it's a Whole Foods next to y'all, then y'all know like I'm in good hands. It's a safe little area. Just do your research and make sure that you are picking somewhere that you are comfortable living. <laughs> Lastly, make sure that the city that you're picking, you're picking for you. Um, make sure that you are going to feel safe in your new city. Make sure that you have things to do outside of work. Like you don't want to just go to work and come home and have nothing to do. I know a lot of times like you may share your vision like, hey, I want to move here. And people may be like, oh, you doing that and shoot you down. Don't take offense to things like that because sometimes people can't see beyond their life and you know they didn't have the opportunity to do things like this so they completely don't understand it so do you you know make sure that you're moving for you because baby it's 2022 like we reaching for the stars we reaching our goals and we moving to these new cities because we only got one life to live you know so thank you guys for watching these are just a few tips that i've learned so far um, make sure that y'all like, comment, and subscribe, and leave feedback in the comments because I want to interact with y'all. So again, thank you guys for watching.